Good morning or afternoon to everyone wherever you are in the world. My name's Edward Ian and I'm hosting this short information webinar. First of all, thanks very much to everyone for joining this session, which is jointly hosted by the Concha Italia Group and Distri Rail of Rotterdam. As you all know, we're living in unprecedented times, but the essentials of our daily lives must somehow go on. And we believe that keeping the global supply chain moving is certainly one of those essentials. So today, ladies and gentlemen, we've gathered a panel of speakers from Conship and Distri Rail to discuss the opportunities and benefits of intermodal rail links for cargo and especially cool coal cargo between Milan, Melzo and Rotterdam. With me on the line this afternoon are Daniela Testi, who is the Marketing and Communications Director of Conship Italia Group, based in Milan. Welcome, Daniele. Dennis Welcome, Mate. Dennis Deru, who is the President of Distri Rail. Dennis joins us from Rotterdam. Nicolo Morali, who is the Sales and Customer Care Manager at Hannibal Conship Facility and Thank Alessandro Battolini, uh, the Sales and Business Development Manager at Ravenna Terminal, which is of course part of Conship. Thank Our you. topics today in the next half an hour or so uh, will include Hannibal and its genuine value proposition. How do we, uh, and how can this joint service support cold chain logistics? Uh, we'll talk about reefer capability and services, uh, the, ben the real genuine benefits of intermodal transport. And finally, we will draw some conclusions for everybody. And I also hope there'll be some time for questions and answers at the end. Uh, all the material I should add, and we'll repeat this at the end, you can have later all the slides and the contact details. Don't worry about this. All you have to do today is listen. Now listen, um, before we hear from the speakers and just to liven you all up a little bit and engage, I hope, we'd like to start by launching a poll. And we've got a couple of polls today. Um, and the first poll asks the question, what do you think is the major constraint or bottleneck to, the, to increasing the intermodal share of intra EU transport. Uh, Alessandra Placa, please. All you have to do, ladies and gentlemen, is click, tick on one of those reasons, which you think is the major bottleneck reason. Is everybody doing that, I hope? Yes, they are. Let's give a few more seconds. Okay. Right, well, that's a clear, uh, I should say a decisive result there. Um, you all asked for, you all gave different reasons there and you can see them written, but the most, uh, the majority, 42% of you, felt that flexibility of rail transport versus road transport. Um, so that's uh, an interesting point. I'm sure we'll come back to that a, a bit later in this webinar. Okay, um, now for our, let's move on now. And, and our first speaker today gives me great pleasure to invite Daniele Testi. He's going to give us an outline of the Conship Hannibal value proposition and above all the critical need for risk management in your supply chain decision making. Daniele. Uh, <clears throat> thank you, Ed. Thank you, everyone. Uh, before starting with my very, very short introduction today, uh, this webinar is also for me an opportunity uh, to first thank all the people involved in logistics operations today. On behalf of Concip Italia Group, I want really to say thank you to all colleagues who are working in the terminal yards, driving trucks and locomotives. They are fully committed to keep the supply chain up and running. 
Um, back to the content of the slides, many of you know that the Conchip is providing for many years a uniquely integrated port-to-door value proposition, including terminal operations, as well as intermodal and ramp solutions for maritime, as well as intra-EU trades, which is the focus of today. Uh, through Hannibal, the group's multimodal transport operator, we are offering over 220 trains per week for international and domestic freight. You can see in the map right now, the slides, uh, the areas covered through the network. <clears throat> um, going forward, uh, a few weeks ago, I had the chance to give a speech at the Swiss Shippers Annual Forum in Interlaken, Switzerland, proposing a topic which is unfortunately now of a massive importance. It was about risk management. Uh, logistics operators and cargo owners usually overestimate the resilience of their supply chain, even if breakdowns such as infrastructural disruption, natural disasters, cyber attacks, changing legislation and epidemics, uh, are becoming more and more frequent. And in the last 24 months, we know very well from Rastad to Piotello and now what is happening with COVID. Uh, the capacity of a logistic network to quickly recover from unforeseen events holds only if the scale of disruption is limited. That's why it's becoming more and more important to plan in advance alternative transport solution. Otherwise, the price to be paid can be very high. And this is the concept that we want to stress today, how to plan in advance, how to find alternatives. Uh, let me finally thank Dennis Dero, the president of Destru Rail, the new operational partner of Conship Hannibal in the Netherlands from February this year. Destru Rail accepted to jointly organize this webinar in order to explain the advantages for shippers and cargo owners using the Melzer Rotterdam rail connection, especially for fresh cargo. So thank you for everyone connected. Thank you and over to you, Ed. Daniele, thanks very much for that. I'd now like to hand over to Nicolo Morali, who's going to tell us about the specific value propositions of Hannibal. Nicolo, please. Thank you, Ed. Welcome, everybody. Well, um, Hannibal is uh, running a daily service uh, seven trains per week between Rotterdam RSC and the intermodal platform of Rail Hub Milano in Melzo. Uh, the service can accommodate se uh, several different uh, intermodal uh, ISO units. Among others, we can mention 20s and 40 high cubes, uh, uh, maritime units, 45 swap bodies, uh, ISO tanks, uh, uh, I would say a good mix. Um, service, uh, the service uh, then offer multiple uh, connection to further link uh, from Rotterdam RSC, all major terminals in Rotterdam, for further connection into UK, Ireland, Scandinavia, Iceland, Russia, and so on. Uh, while on the Italian side, uh, from Rail Hub Milano, there is a wide variety of uh, connections. Uh, among others, I'd like to mention two trains per day between Melzo and Padua terminal to serve the northeast side of Italy. Um, five trains per week, uh, Monday to Friday into Bari uh, for further connection to uh, Turkey, Greece uh, and Albania with short, uh, short zero row connections. And three trains per week into uh, TCR terminal in Ravenna, uh, which offer very good connection to all major port destinations uh, in the East Med. Uh, I think my colleague Alessandro Battolini will then go further into the details uh, about that uh, uh, later on. Um, if we can move on to the next slide, I'd like to provide also some more uh, details about, about the service, operational details. Um, service uh, is currently, as I said, running uh, uh, seven days a week and uh, um, transit time, purely rail transit time is 17 hours, uh, while uh, the total transit time from delivery to pickup uh, uh, from both terminal is day A, day C, from closing time to uh, MAD in, uh, in the other terminal. Uh, the uh, closing time in Rotterdam is set at 1500 and the availability in Melzo day C is uh, 6 a.m. 
And uh, on the no while on the northbound, the concept is uh, pretty much similar, except the closing in Meltzer is 16.30, and the availability in Rotterdam is 6 a.m., also uh, day C. If we can move on one more slide, then um, let's see how this will work on the real world. We try to build up two scenarios. The scenarios A is typically the unbalanced traffic scenario where uh, the, unit, the unit is basically loaded in Rotterdam RSC on day one, then, we, then it will gate into RSC terminal before 1500 day one. Day two, it will arrive in Melzo Rail Hub uh, Milano for then day C being picked up uh, uh, for delivery to the final destination. While same day, the empty return into Melzo Rail Hub Milano and day three, the uh, unit, uh, uh, empty unit will be back available uh, uh, at the terminal RSC in, uh, in Rotterdam. Then scenario B would be the ideal uh, balanced uh, traffic where it works pretty much the same way, uh, except day one we do unload the reloading in the Netherlands and the unit loaded gets turned back into RSC for then day two depart day three arrival in Melzo, day four deliver and pick up, day five um, arrival into Rotterdam RSC and day six deliver reload again in the Benelux area for then being shipped back into Italy. Um, the above two scenarios are uh, perfectly applicable also to temperature controlled cargo, which uh, um, with the current capacity of a potential block train loaded with 45 reefer high cube pallet wide containers could fit potentially up to 34 uh, units with 27 tons payload each. But I think my uh, our partner, uh, Dennis Dero uh, from uh, Distri Rail will uh, go further into details uh, later on about this. And uh, Ed, uh, back to you. Niccolo, thanks a lot for that. Uh, now, um, let's, before we move on to Dennis, let's have another instant poll here. And the question is, what do you think is the main reason why refrigerated cargo is moved almost entirely at the moment by road? You can see the multi-choice there. Please give us your response. Take your time. Few more seconds. Alessandro, do we have a right? Yeah, right. Well, that's very interesting again. 47% of you, almost half, believe that a lack of knowledge or familiarity with other intermodal solutions is the main reason for that. So that's a, another very strong conclusion there, a very strong indicator. So thank you very much for that. Okay, uh, moving on, gives me great pleasure now to uh, invite the president of Distra Rail, that's the Conship partner, Mr. Dennis Deru in Rotterdam to share his insights on cold chain and some of the solutions we have in that direction. Dennis, please. Well, good morning to you. I hope I, it's all clear. I hope you can hear me. Absolutely. Okay. Well, anyway, uh, first uh, to start with, uh, again, thanks for, for having the opportunity to explain to you and to the rest of the public the capabilities we have with, with the train. Uh, again, this is a new solution. It's, it's quite new uh, to, the, to the train uh, connections we can offer. Um, we are going to work with a 45 feet standalone unit, which does not require a plug-in, uh, which means it can run on itself. Uh, the tank we are using at the moment is, is 250 liters. Uh, if you do uh, the minus 25, which is the heaviest uh, on, on the reefer, it uses two liters an hour, which means um, the total 
daytime or the, the total time that it can run without plug-in or without a connection to, to the, the main electricity network is, is 5.2 days. Uh, as you already have seen, uh, the connection we can offer via the daily connection via Honeyball, uh, it can run quite smoothly without any interruptions. So there is no hesitation to, to use this product. Um, besides this, the, the unit is also a little bit bigger than the normal standardized unit. Uh, so if you look at to ocean rate or ocean uh, volumes, it goes uh, mainly with 40 feet high cube, which means we have sufficient space. But besides this, there is also an additional advantage, and that is the, the payload you can, can load into the container. It's 27 tons. So you can also load more in the container, which means if you calculate it back on the total product, the weight is less, the cost is less. Uh, the commodities which we can transfer from plus 25 to minus 25, include fish, meat, fruit and vegetables, uh, and what's at the moment, I think very important, pharmaceuticals and medicines. Um, besides this, this option, uh, we got, uh, I think on the train, uh, enough plugs or enough space to, to load these containers. Uh, so I think it's, it's very important that the market knows that they have an alternative, uh, besides the road. Uh, we can't go to Italy by, uh, by boat or by barge, but we can go by train. And I think if, if, if the shippers and, and receivers know about this, I think they can use it. So this is especially is why we want to include this or, or send this out into the world. Um, besides, besides this, yeah, I think uh, if you look, there is already a, a, a connection between Italy. I think uh, the government institutions need to also focus on, on more capacity on the train. Uh, I think uh, we also get out more to, to the public that, that they have the possibility to transport their, their refrigerated goods by train with the reef capabilities. Uh, economies of scale is, is if you look at into, let's say, the, the volumes we can transport, and uh, you can do two, let's say, by road, you can do the other eight by, by train. Then you go shunting between the terminals, which means you can do a lot more with a lot less cost. Um, I think it's, it's flexible, it's just as flexible as, as the road. It's a little bit longer transit, but in the end, I think it's, it's a very good alternative. Uh, back to you, Edward. Thank you very much for that, Dennis. That's great. Um, now that takes us nicely onto the subject of Ravenna Terminal. And uh, I'd like to invite Alessandro Vassalini. Uh, Alessandro is going to share some thoughts on the benefits of uh, using Ravenna as a specialist cold chain terminal and why it's such a leader in the cold chain supply solution. Uh, Alessandro, please go ahead. Thank you, Ed. Uh, Ravenna Container Terminal represents a strategic gateway in the Adriatic Sea for the East Mediterranean trades, offering several maritime connections covering the Med areas from Egypt to Turkey, including Israel, Cyprus and Lebanon, with very fast transit times. Ravenna is directly connected with the Ray Lab in Melzo, Milan, which allows quick and direct uh, access to central northern European areas. The Ravenna rail plant consists of five railways over 400 meters long with a large dedicated storage area. All activities are carried out with the two RMGs exclusively used for the loading and loading of trains. We offer a bonded warehouse with the possibility of completing staffing and unstaffing of all kinds of goods, especially perishable ones. Um, furthermore, all inspection activities such as port health, customs inspection, veterinary inspections, x-ray, are conducted in the terminal area with plenty of benefit for our customers. Uh, moving on the next slide, we can appreciate how fast it can be to connect the East Med areas with Central and Northern Europe 
area, supplying these areas with the perishable goods coming from the East Med region. Um, through the pre-clearing service, which means uh, that the goods are cleared before the arrival of the vessel and by using the T1, a transit document which allows goods generated outside the EU to move freely within the EU. We can handle the goods while the vessel is still alongside working. Operationally, the goods are unstaffed from the containers and directly loaded onto refrigerated trucks that will reach northern European areas in 24, 36 hours. Now, thanks to our joint venture with District Rail, we have a new opportunity which allows us, by using the intermodal solution equipped with the 45 feet long reefer containers to maintain the same terminal performances and we can assure that the goods will be on their way to the markets after having been discharged only six or six to ten hours maximum before. This is a precious time, money saving asset. Uh, don't you agree? It Ed, uh, it's back to you now. Thank you. Thanks very much for that, Alessandro. Uh, now, um, we're just about done from talking. We'd obviously like to have a dialogue and get some, get some questions from you a bit later. But before we do that, I'd like to ask to Niccolo Morali to come back. Uh, he's going to give us some brief, pertinent conclusions about today's session. Niccolo, can we have your concluding thoughts, please? Thank you, Ed. <clears throat> well, just to conclude, let me try to bring this to another level, let's say more a strategic way of looking at this. Um, the challenges supply chain is facing these days are due to several years of industry shopping around for cheaper solutions, jumping from one modality to the other, depending on what was cheaper solution at the time. These ways of exploiting our industry brought us to a point where now, for instance, uh, the demand for intermodal transport is increasing, but there is a shortage of supply. And possibly by the time that the capacity will be available, truck drivers will be willing to travel back to Italy. And again, will be an oversupply. So our customers uh, uh, recommend, especially companies moving large volume that can determine whether an intermodal service uh, will live or die, should pay more attention on how they allocate uh, volumes into different modalities and try to keep a balance in between them um, in order to minimize risk and work together with all other stakeholders to keep supply chain up and running at all time. We, as Hannibal District Rail, we do our part, confirming our commitment to offer reliable and, in, and in intermodal service with stable daily departure, enhanced now by the possibility to have temperature control cargo on board. Ladies and gentlemen, now it's the time to give this a chance. Ed? back to you. Niccolo, thanks very much for those conclusions and uh, uh, gentlemen, thank you each for your excellent contributions. Now we, we have some time, uh, certainly for some questions. Uh, we know a number of people have joined us, so um, let take your time. There is a facility uh, at the bottom of your screen whereby you can type a question in if you wish. Um, so please do that. We'll wait for a moment to see if there are any questions. Please take your time. Any questions? Okay, there's one in from uh, Francesca Loretti. Uh, uh, the, let, let, let's start with one that's just come in. Uh, from Alexandra, Alexander Ryshenko. Thank you, Alexander. Um, and I think it's a question for all four of you. 
what and it's a good question what about oversized cargoes how do we handle those let's start perhaps with uh, Niccolo well uh, if for oversized uh, you mean over overdimensioned uh, unfortunately um, due to the gouge of uh, rail uh, of uh, rail infrastructure at this time uh, oversized uh, uh, project cargo cannot be transported by rail right right yeah yeah um, any other views on that panelists no okay hope we've answered that question Alexander um, We've got another question from Francesca Loretti. Francesca is asking if there is a major shift from road haulage to rail movement, the kind we're talking about today, how much rail capacity is available at short notice and how fast can you increase capacity to meet extra demand and i think i'd probably like dennis to answer that question first and maybe followed up with something from daniele dennis okay maybe waiting for dennis i suggest yeah, that uh, it's okay i can okay good. Oh, then you go first dennis please yeah yeah, yeah. Well, the units are ready. We, we have them uh, at the moment in stock on our depot, so they, the, we have them available. So to answer the question, how fast can you shift? Well, we can shift today. Uh, the only thing is, is that the, the customer knows that, that it's, it's a viable option. And besides this, and I didn't mention that yet, it's also CO2 neutral. Eh? It, uh, by train, it's, it's a lot less uh, hurting the environment than, let's say, the truck. Uh, the units uh, which we use are, of course, diesel electric. That is a disadvantage. Yeah. And if you go to the electric, yeah, well, that will be, a, a, I think, a little bit of pain in the ass because yeah, we need to have multiple governments uh, approving uh, a complete electric genset on the train. This will be very difficult. So I think to answer the question quite fairly, we can use it by today. We already have, let's say, 20 to 30 units standing ready. So if you want to shift your, your volumes, we can shift it. Uh, the other way around, same thing. Uh, again, it is available. Uh, it is CO2 neutral. And I think in the end, it, it's, a, it's a good option. The only thing uh, which in my view is, 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 is wrong is that no one knew about it. But yeah. Right, great. Thanks for that, uh, Dennis. Uh, Daniele, would you like to, to, to add? Oh, well, uh, in terms of capacity improvement, uh, uh, before the COVID issue, uh, Hannibal already planned to almost double the capacity, which means to establish a second daily round trip from uh, uh, Melzer to Rob to Dam and vice versa. So this is in the plan. For sure, this must respond to the, the proper demand. So it takes time, obviously, to double the full capacity. But in case the market will answer rapidly, we have already put in place a project to get this result in a very, very short time. For the time being, the trains are pretty good in terms of loading capacity. So we have certainty chance to welcome this new product. And in case of full respond, we, as I repeat, we can almost double the capacity within a few months. Maybe, Nicolò, you can add something more because uh, Nicolò is in charge for the development, business development of this product. Yeah, I would say uh, with the three months pre-advice, we can uh, uh, implement a new departure. That's the timing. So uh, planning, it's key. Uh, trains, not trucks, can be that can be diverted from one area to the other of, uh, of Europe, of course. But uh, thanks to uh, the fact that we do run our own assets, uh, we are slightly more flexible than uh, uh, other REUs. So um, I would say that's the time frame: three months. Great, thanks Nick. We've got some really, just to let everyone know, we've got some excellent questions coming in. Uh, I've got a, we've got a question here from Tom Van Marl, um, who has an excellent question, I think. We've got several good ones, but let me ask one for Tom. Where can I make an inquiry about this? I have a possible flow from the UK to Italy, which is currently going by road. That sounds like business, guys. Who's going to answer that? Uh, you, I, I, I think I can. Um, you can 
uh, contact us directly. Uh, on the next uh, slide, uh, you'll see yeah. the contact details. Uh, uh, you can relate to me, of course, for any inquiry of uh, uh, rates for uh, transport uh, uh, from Rotterdam to, uh, to Italy and for the uh, UK to Rotterdam uh, our agent uh, in Rotterdam District. I'm sure they would be uh, glad to support. So, uh, first touch point would be me, and then uh, we'll coordinate uh, uh, with, with them. Okay, uh, Thomas, they, they will be in touch with you on that, rest assured, straight after this. Um, next great question uh, from a gentleman called Keith Brady. Are there any future plans to carry electric only reefers? One for Dennis, maybe. Um, Dennis. Yeah. Yeah, well, uh, for now, the units are still run on, on diesel uh, before we, we will switch to electric, which is, of course, the future. Yeah, that, that will take some time. I think uh, we need to check this with our, our, our supplier of, of uh, the reefer units. Uh, but I think that will take some more time than, than what we have available right now. Uh, I also saw a question about uh, gensets. Same thing here. Uh, we need to, to check the regulations and, and what is possible. Uh, again, the, the 45 diesel electric, they are right now available. Uh, the other options, yeah, we, we need to investigate. That's something for the future. Great. Thanks for that, Dennis. Hope that, sorry, anything to add to that? Thank well, you for that. I, Go ahead, Nicola. Yeah, if I may add something, uh, it, the technology basically uh, back to the uh, fully electric uh, uh, gensets. Technology is available at the moment. It's just uh, an issue about the regulations. Uh, the uh, prototype has been uh, built. It was approved uh, for, for the German uh, railway. Uh, still need to be approved by the uh, Dutch, uh, Swiss and Italian uh, railway uh, at the moment. So as you can see, uh, once again, we are uh, Europe on the paper, but then when, you, we, when we come to the real world, each country has its own regulation. This is something that needs to be uh, brought up, of course, at the uh, legislator uh, level, but um, hopefully That's it will be... a regulatory issue, yeah. yeah. Thanks, Nicolo. Another very good question. What, it, from Manuel Jumelet, what is the forecast for P400 trailers? That's an open question. Uh, January 21. Uh, correct, if I may add, because this is in line with the project of development in Alp Transit, that, as you know, is the tunnel, uh, got a tunnel between uh, Switzerland and, and Italy. So we are expecting that through this uh, infrastructure development, there will be almost a chance to double the capacities and throughput between uh, Italy and Switzerland. So via Switzerland going up to the Benelux. And uh, um, as soon as the infrastructure will be completed, we are now in the final phase expected to be uh, for December this year. So ready for operation uh, January 2021 uh, to have the chance to Low the P400 uh, up to Milano and also increasing the total loading uh, weight capacity, which is now limited to 1,400 to 1,600 tons and will become 200,000 tons, which is uh, an improvement of almost 25%. So, this will for sure offer new chance for this kind of, uh, uh, let's say, trades. But obviously, let me remind, also looking at some other question and more technical question, that the first topic is to try to change the point of view, to start thinking that also the ray could be an alternative solution for fresh cargo and do not wait for obstacles, do not wait for disruption that unfortunately are happening today. But also if you look at a few uh, weeks ago, if we consider the shortage of truck drivers is also putting pressure on, on the road haulage system. So uh, the main scope of webinar like this is uh, to try to put in the market the, the concept of uh, planning in advance, uh, try to test the solution, mm -hmm. maybe move a certain percentage that at the beginning is, is for sure limited, but then starting to improve. Uh, and so having, in, having the chance to have in place two alternatives that can be used in order to boost one or the other solution when there is an issue. Thank you, Daniele. 
Uh, time for another question. We have one from a gentleman called Fulvio Quattrocolo. Um, he, Fulvio's question is uh, about the traffic flows of full shipments. And are they, are they greater uh, north to south or south to north? This is currently. Can anybody answer that? Well, I can. Um, uh, typically, historically, the export from Italy, uh, so the uh, northbound is the strongest uh, flow and is also the highest uh, paying cargo, um, while uh, the southbound is uh, typically used to repo the equipment and is uh, more, uh, more used for uh, commodities while the northbound is finished product. However, um, lately, uh, due to the constraints on the border crossing, road border crossing, we, ha we experience such an increase in demand, both northbound and southbound. So at the moment, uh, um, it, the traffic is quite well balanced, I would say. Thank you for that. Uh, we have time for some more questions, ladies and gentlemen. We have a question now from Peter Hill. Peter's question is, what level of demand do you expect for the rail freight solution? I think that's in the short to medium term. Nicola? So, yeah, it's hard. Uh, again, it's hard to predict and to make any forecast uh, these days. Uh, since uh, what is uh, what's happening, however, we do expect for sure an increase uh, in uh, in demand uh, on a, such uh, an important corridor with such a uh, uh, numerous number of uh, uh, connections. Uh, then from Rotterdam to serve other markets, and from uh, Milano to serve uh, Italy and further down uh, other areas in the Mediterranean. I think this is a corridor that will uh, for sure increase uh, uh, the traffic in the next uh, upcoming uh, six months, one year for sure. Thank you, Nicola. We, we now have a question for, for Daniela Testi, if I can find it, uh, from Lorenzo Marcenaro. Uh, the question is, could it be workable for providers like Conship Hannibal to arrange the trucking to, to loading, unloading also, and so be able to offer some all-in options. Um, and Lorenzo's comment is this would make things much easier when it comes to arranging the intermodal solution. That's a question for you, Daniele. Uh, yes, thank you, Ed, and thanks for the question. Um, this gives me the chance to say that there is already the all-in solution. Uh, what we are offering today is not only the ramp service, but it's also the uh, last mile tracking um, service uh, in uh, Italy as well as in uh, Rotterdam. In Italy, we have as Hannibal our own fleet of trucks, so we can provide the full all-in solution, as well as if we consider some a further option, for instance, in Ravenna, we do also have access to uh, um, temperature controlled warehouse where we can also unload the cargo and store the cargo thanks to some local partners. Uh, the same is available in Rotterdam through this rail partnership. And so the all in solution is already in place. And in case of need, you can ask for the quotation directly to the commercial department. And you will see at the end of this presentation the contacts as well as in the website. Okay, great. Thank you for that, Daniele. We have, we've got time for two more questions, ladies and gentlemen. Um, I don't think we've asked, asked this, but one from Stefano Musso. We're talking about, he and Stefano says, we're talking about containers here, but what about trucks via rail? Anybody? It's probably linked um, to the question we got before. So, um, Trucks, uh, uh, meaning trailers, so intermodal trailers. Uh, the gentleman who asked before about uh, P400 openings was probably referring to, uh, to that. So beginning of 21, we'll be able to move trailers P400 profile, uh, so with a wider and higher uh, loading capacity 
uh, through, uh, through the corridor uh, between uh, Melso and Rotterdam and, and vice versa. So yeah, that, that, I think that's the answer. Great, thank you. N another question from uh, Alexander Ryshenko in Russia, I believe. Uh, Alexander's asking, um, as I understand it, these 45 foot containers are, are your own. That's his question. And he's, if he's saying, if yes, can we drop them off in Russia? Uh, can we use your container for general cargoes? Uh, that's his question. Can we do that? Yeah. Yeah. There are the containers we can use for multiple purposes. Eh? The, the perfect one would be that we can load them back, let's say, with fish or with meat. But, but in the end, uh, it would be preferred that, uh, that, that we load them back with cargo. Same goes to Italy. Yeah. Right, right, right. Excellent. Um, are there any more questions, ladies and gentlemen? We're slow, quickly running out of time, unfortunately. Any more? Any more for any more? Okay. Um, that just leaves me. Uh, thank you very much for those excellent questions and indeed the very uh, fulsome answers. Uh, that just leaves me to do, make my thanks. Thank you in particular to Dennis, to Danielli. Nicolo, Nicolo and Alessandro for sharing your thoughts today and of course to you all our participants thanks for listening and for those as I said those excellent questions just before we finish I'd like to hand back to Daniele uh, who's going to finish up the webinar thank you very much for joining us today Daniele thank you Ed and most important thank you all for the particip people participating today to this webinar I do want finally highlight that all the slides contents presented today will be available online through a link that all the attendees will receive shortly via mail if you are interested in getting more info about all the rail network and solutions provided by conship hannibal and as well as uh, district ray you can use the connectivity tool which is a tool available on the website www.contripitalia.com as well as the quotation tool, which is a tool you can use just to put and pull for your request of quotation. Uh, in the slides, you will also find uh, the right contact to be used in case of further needs. And we remain obviously at your full disposal. And um, let me say, stay safe and healthy, everyone. And remember that uh, we, as a logistic provider, we are committed to keep the supply chain up and running during this extraordinary period in our lives. Thanks for your precious support and see you soon. Thank you, Daniele. Goodbye, everyone. Thank you. Thank you.